like, who's John McAfee? Yeah. He's like, check your computer screen, bro. You know, McAfee antivirus guy. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do it, whatever. You know, needed the money. And so this guy, John McAfee, calls me. He's like, you know who this is, son. And I'm like, I think it's John McAfee, sir. He's like, yeah, how much you charge? I said, 500 to 1,000 a day, depending upon the threat. And he's like, that's crazy. I only pay my, pay my green berries 250 bucks a day or whatever. And I was like, well, it's your life, sir. It's your life. And, and so um, he said, damn, you drive a hard bargain. And so he said, well, you got to come here tonight. You got to be here in Lexington tonight. Yeah. And I said, tonight? What? You know? And I was hoping this guy was going to be in the Caribbean or Bahamas so I could go guard him there. He's in Lexington, Tennessee. And so I fly that night and, and meet him at his house. He's got guns strapped on him. He's the tech billionaire, you know, and, but just a madman, madman mogul. Yeah. And, and he's strapped and, and there's bullets in the wall, holes in the wall near, near his room. And he's, he's vaulted in his, his room. When he came out, it took him like 30 minutes to get out of his room. Like you can hear chick, 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 all these like latches and stuff. And this, he had this big metal door that was welded in his room. And that's where he like lived in a safe kind of, you and know. This, and this is in what state? Lexington, Tennessee. Fuck. Okay. And he and he comes out. My first meeting with him. He's got attack dogs over here barking all loud. He comes in. He comes. Um, he uh, comes out. And he's smoking a cigarette. And he's like, he's like, step outside with me. And we went outside. And he was super paranoid. And he looked me dead in the eyes. And I didn't know if he was gonna kiss me or what. I said, "Man, can, 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 like I could smell scotch all over his breath." He was like this close. Yeah. And it's awkward, you know, when somebody's that close. And, yeah. And I was like, "Oh man, what have I? What am I doing here, man? <laughs> Five hundred ain't worth it, you know." Yeah. I mean, but I need that cheese, you know. Yes, sir. I need that cheddar. And so he looked at me. He said, uh, "Who's the most feared man on the battlefield, son?" And I looked at him and I was like, "Get me the hell out of this place, man! I don't need this, son." To uh, um, you know stuff right now and he's like he's like the most feared man on the battlefield is uh, the oldest man do you understand me and when he said that man my kind of my hair stood up I was like dude this guy ain't playing around the way he looked at me I mean he basically gave me a book like this thick in one sentence about yeah. his life he was basically saying I'm the oldest guy here I've survived the longest you know, I've weathered the storm. I've battled it out. I'm the top G here. You're not. You know, you might be a seal, but you're nothing to me. And, you know, like in that way. Like, you're, you know, yeah. you know I've been, I, I, I've ran from these people in Belize, accused of murder. You know, he's a, his own fugitive, escaped Belize by himself. Crazy story. Yeah. Right. He, all this crazy story. So this is after that. And yeah. In, okay. In, right after that. Right after in, that. Invented the antivirus. Yeah. All this crazy stuff. And he's basically saying, I'm in his world, you know, and, and no matter what anybody else thinks about him, because he would pretend kind of like he was a uh, senile old man, like clumsy, but he wasn't. He's yeah. always testing you. And so I, so I said, Roger, that's right. He said, you understand me? And I said, yes, sir. And from that moment on, we got along real well. Because I, I just I, I just believed what he said and respected him. And we got along real well. And um, and I think the difference in me and everybody else in in – his team was, uh, including Janice, his wife, who was who was a, a former prostitute. You the, know, the, the black chick. Yeah, yeah. It, she's like, you know, I think the thing that separated me was that I was the only one that was ever um, asked to come there. Everybody else approached John McAfee, like his crypto trader knocked on the door. He got out of prison, studied McAfee for seven years, got out of prison. Come knocks on the door, says, I want to trade crypto for you. John McAfee gives him like four grand. He turns it into 40 in a couple weeks. He goes, okay, you can trade with me. You know, everybody came in like that. Okay. Like, 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 you know, these SF guys, they all knew each other, and, and they they somehow talked to John McAfee. What is SF guys? Uh, Special Forces guys. Okay. Aw cool. Awesome guys. Yeah. And um, and then you have Janice, Janice, the prostitute, which walked up to him in Miami with her friend, the call girl, yeah. and, and approached him. So... I mean, he would still allow you in his life, but he never would ever trust you because you approached him. But if he approached you, which he approached me, he called me, you know. I didn't call him. And I, and I had to remind him of that a lot because yeah. he was so paranoid, man. Put me through all kinds of terrible tests. 
you know, watching everybody's cell phone through his cell phone. Crazy stuff, man. Well, how does he watch everyone's cell phone through his cell phone? Bro, he called me. I don't know. He called me in his room one day and said, hey, son, you want to see something? And this is when I was running the whole empire. Because uh, I went from bodyguard to CEO to... Of to, his company, right? To run his whole company, yeah. And what exactly... Two, you, two companies, yeah. You know, tell me the cell phone and then tell me what what, what company were you running? He, 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 he called me He called me in his his room. He said, and I never went in his room. He never called nobody in his room. So I was like, oh, God. And he's like, come in here, son. And I went in there and he, and he had his phone. He goes, check this out. And he, and he showed me showed me his phone, bro. And, and on his phone streaming live is... Because there's like seven people in the house. Everybody's text messages are coming. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, the only thing I can say, because you know when you talk, if you talk crap about people, if you talk, talk shit about people, yeah, you know, you, and then they find you out, and you're like, hey, man, hey, my yeah, bad, bro. Yeah. You know, my bad, dog. Come on, come on, man. You know I was playing. And that's why I, I did the back I said, sir, sir, you know I was playing, right? And he was like, ah, oh, don't worry about it, son. Cause I, you know, I was talking mad crap. Like, <laughs> man, this guy is a bastard to me. Working me, working my, working my ass off, working me to, to the bones, man. Was, so why would he show show you that? I, it was all intimidation. It was all showing me how he was in control. He was in control of everything. Man. Does the, do you think the FBI has it just like that? I don't think so. I don't, how I don't know how I don't know how he did that, but I saw what I saw. Yeah, I mean, streaming live, streaming live. Yeah, everybody's text. Yeah, in the house. Wow. My text, everybody's text. You That's know? nuts. Was, was he on methamphetamine at the time? I, I never seen him do the meth, but I, but there was white powder all over his house all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I it wasn't say, Christmas either. I ain't no, yeah. Christmas, it wasn't Christmas decorations. No, dude, I, I would, uh, one of my hobbies was to go around the house and, and take his $100 bills that were rolled up real tight behind the dresser. All over, they were all over, like underneath his cabinets and stuff. And one of my hobbies, I get him and like iron them out for him, and wash them and iron them, give them back to him. Hey, sir, here's like a thousand bucks and one hundreds. Like, it's from all rolled yeah, up. Yeah, he's like, where'd you get these? I was like, you don't want to know, you know. Like, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, you know. But yeah, they were rolled up, and and, and I mean, I found him pretty much OD'd one time, crazy man, in his bed, butt naked, just spread out, just just black and blue. Uh, and there was a big old big sack of white powder, and I'm like, "There's no way that's coke. There's no way. What is that, bro? It's like this big, man." And, yeah. And uh, all these hundred dollar bills rolled up, and and then when they test him in the hospital, they said, "What was he on?" I said, "I don't know. I, I, nothing. I didn't see nothing." And they're like, "Because I was super loyal to back for you." Yeah. And doctor's like, "No, he's on something." He said, "You need to tell us." And, they, and then they went and did the blood work, and there was nothing in his system. So like. I don't know what that white stuff was that he was doing. I think it was nootropics or something weird. But he knew exactly how to make meth. Yeah. And he had me go into the store to buy him Sudafed all the time. Yeah. You know. Wow. And so you you obviously got in the, the gr good graces with him that you started running his companies yeah, and what companies are these? What exactly are they? Were they doing? So, so man, I think I think these guys, man, sometimes these these billionaires or whatever, they sometimes they don't have kids, and you know you're close to them, you're protecting them, yeah, you know, and so they feel like super comfortable around you. And somebody like John McAfee need that, um, and so I just started, I started, I I I went from his bodyguard to like the head of security, you know, and then uh, like his right hand man assistant. And then he started just tasking me with things, little responsibilities here and there. And I would complete them. And then he started saying, read all these white papers, all these white papers, you know, about each company, about these blockchain technology companies and these crypto company, up and coming companies. Yeah. And then he had me like studying all this stuff and giving him feedback. And he started looking at me like his lucky charm. You know, he's Irish. I'm, 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 I'm part Irish. And so he started looking at me as like his luck because I, I started making him a ton of money. Okay. You know, by because I, I was picking out the um, the coin of the day. I was picking out cryptocurrency. Okay. That he gave me these parameters. I would select it, give it to him. He would mention it, and it would skyrocket. Oh shit! Wait, because he had so much influence, and he thought he thought I was his lucky charm. But man, honestly, bro, it wasn't it wasn't me. It just it just it didn't matter what he touched or mentioned at the time. He was the top of the crypto game. And he so had he, that could, much he, could, he could tweet it 
and then people would get uh, FOMO or whatever, fear of missing out or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then he, he'd have his money in it at the same time. Yeah. And so you're so you're talking about like 75% of 1 million followers on Twitter, his Twitter account at the time. Yeah. Would do exactly what he said. Oh, shit. And so that's that's power. You know, 100%. That's authority. Yeah. Now he, now, he would tell everybody, don't. Don't be investing in this. You're going to lose your money. So he used that too. Yeah. little reverse psychology. Yeah. Yep. And they do it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's 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 interesting. And I know it, it probably gets pretty deep in regards to you. I mean, did he have, did he just have the wife at the time or did he have a, you know, an entourage of, of women around him? Bro, he, you know, like, like he talked to big game, you know. He was a real believer in P.T. Barnum. What P.T. Barnum said, you know, the circus guy, he said, you know, bad news, good news. It's all news, right? It's all great news. Yeah. And so he would say crazy stuff. He acted like a big partier. And I know he was for a while. But when I met him, he was solo with Janice. Okay. There wasn't that underage girls around and stuff? No, man. Yeah. No. Of course not, right? I, yeah, of course yeah. not. I, I never saw anything like that um, when I was with him. And I was with him all the time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, uh, but... But that doesn't mean, dude, he wasn't a sick dude in the head or, or evil or any of this. Like, like I, I know that he had a lot of demons in that in that closet, you know. I know he had some crazy stuff going on. So he ended up... Because even the FBI, when they arrested me, yeah, they said, you don't know who this guy is. And I said, he didn't do nothing. And they're like, they're like Jimmy, if, if, if you knew what we knew... You wouldn't stand up for him. Yeah. You know? Because they knew you stand on morals and principles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, But the money, how good was the money? The money was amazing. I mean, 500 bucks a day, it started. Yeah. And when I got there, he said, you know I can't pay you this forever, son. Right when I got there. Yeah. And I was like, well, the day you stop paying me, I'm out of here, sir. You know, because I, I wasn't, uh, it was it was too crazy of an environment. It was crazy environment to be in. So his so, environment, yeah, his environment, it, which just hit, he kept with just kept the paranoia, paranoia, staring out the window for hours like a sniper, like crazy stuff, man. People, crazy people coming to the house. Were you actually living in the house with them? Yeah, twenty four hours, twenty four hours, man. Very first night. Was it a big house, small house? Big house, and it's like a big, massive plantation house. And and, and the very first time, uh, the the very the first the first night, I woke up. He's straddling me. On the bed, bro, he, he's got a foot here and a foot here. Can you imagine you're sleeping like this, barely sleeping because you're so tired, you just flew in? And this guy you don't even know, strapped with a MAC-10 and a 45 without a shirt on, smoking a cigarette, and he's standing over me, bro. I, I'm like laying in the bed, and he crawled on the bed with me, and, and and he's got one foot on this side, one foot. And I feel, obviously, I mean, I, I see, I just wake up, and he's standing over me, straddled me. Yeah. And he's got his pistol out, tapping on his leg. And of course, I had my pistol like this already uh, on my side, and so I just turned my pistol up like this in the covers, like this. Yeah. And I, I, I don't mess around. And and he was like, "Are you ready, son?" And I was like, "Oh hell no, bro! <laughs> I'm about to get Diddy up in here, dog." Oh shit! No, man, I can't play this game, dude. Yeah. Um. And uh, he said, "Are you ready?" I said, "I guess, sir." And he said, okay, come on. And he jumped off the bed and ran. And, you know, just crazy. And I followed him, and he, and, he, and he was staring out the window for four hours. Is this dude like 70 years old at the time? Yeah, like 70 years old or something crazy. Maybe 75. I can't remember. But, but, but man, it was, it was a wild ride. Then I started getting paid like uh, about 1000 a day and then 1500 a day. And then, man, he started just giving me just – just tons of money. I, I was for the while I was making like twenty five thousand in in a day. Sometimes. Wow! Every couple of days I make another twenty grand, twenty five grand here. You know, and it that stuff adds up. And then we're then I was playing the crypto game, of course, and wow. made a bunch of money doing that. And of course, all that was going to collapse on me. So made you know millions with 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 Maxi. How long were you with them for? I was with him for about two years. Was this a, 17, so eight, seventeen eighteen? So this was after the Belize murder or something, his neighbor? Yeah, right right after that. Did he get uh what happened with that? They just couldn't find the evidence or something or Bro, they they he escaped. <laughs> he ran. Yeah. And he escaped back to God, I can't remember where it was now, man. I blacked a lot of this stuff out. But but basically he he escaped back to the States. Okay. He made his way back to the States without them knowing it, you know. 
and they never prosecuted him for anything in the States. Okay. But he did end up back in prison, though. Uh, he did end up back in, um, in uh, yeah, he was, um, after after we broke ways, man, yeah. um, um, he went over, he, he went on the run, and, and I went on the run, too. And you, did you break ways, did you break ways, and I know there's a lot of holes in this story, guys, and whoever's listening, you're gonna be talking shit to me, fucking lucky, fucking blah, 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 but... People are always like, this guy's skipping over. It's, dude, I've done hours and hours of podcasts on, yes. on this information. If anybody wants to, to really dive into that story, you know. It's there. But but basically, I'm running the uh, the whole company. Me and him have a big falling out, me and McAfee. So over? We, over some crazy, stupid stuff. But but like, like he's just, he was just crazy. He was, I mean, I, he's strung out all the time. You know, I'm working 20-hour days. I have like a basically a, a meltdown, like I don't know if it's PTSD. I don't know if we put LSD in my, dr- my my drink one night or whatever, but I have a big, um, just I, I have a big falling out. I run out in the woods. I can hear machine guns going off. I like strip down. The coldest night of my life, man. And I just stay in the swamp there in Ocracoke, North Carolina. And so. I walk by, I do the walk of shame the next day back to the house. And here I am, the CEO, and I'm all jacked up, man. Like, everybody's like, oh, what the heck, man, happened to you, bro? Like, 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 what happened to Jimmy, you know? And I, and I, because I came to after this big manic episode, this massive weird meltdown I had. So I come back and I'm like, I, I don't know you anymore, sir, because I felt like you messed with me. I felt like John McAfee messed with me and he was pressing me or something weird. And so, I left there, man. Left everything, left pretty much everything he gave me, and uh, I had cars, house. I, I had a bunch of stuff in my name, and I just left, bro. I just ran, and uh, came back to Texas, and um, went on a sabbatical, man, for two years overseas. What is um, that sabbatical? What does that mean? Basically, a sabbatical is, man, when you just take off. You know, yeah. you just take off, and you just go on a. I don't know if it's a spiritual journey, but it's just like you just don't care. You you take off like two years and just for you, you know, you don't care about nothing else. You're just doing your own thing. And that's what I was doing. Say at the same time, my parents said that they got some letters from the FBI and they were visiting my house. My mom's house, knocking on the door. Yeah. And so I decided to leave the country. And because they arrested John McAfee. And once they once they arrested John McAfee. I, I knew I was next. And they arrested John McAfee for what? Uh, basically, eight felonies. But but the main reason was they caponed him. You know that 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 tax evasion. Okay. He was he was he was he was he was he was saying on his uh, Twitter account that he um he wasn't paying his taxes anymore. And and I didn't believe that. I mean, most of the stuff he ever said was true. Yeah. He had a no bluff policy. But that I was like, there's no way he's telling people. Not to pay their taxes. There's no way he doesn't pay his taxes. Dude, that guy wasn't paying his taxes for six years, making millions of dollars. And yeah. so they got him for that. That was the main reason. Uh, and then I'm on the run for two years on a, this on this hiatus, man. Just lost, bro. Just lost in the sauce, you know, living out in Medellin. And, and How was he living out there? It was cool. It was. It, you were it, doing work out there, weren't you? I was doing work in and out of Medellin and Nicaragua, El Salvador, and stuff. But mercenary work, the mercenary stuff, real, real mercenary stuff. No. What is what is considered real mercenary stuff? Well, you know, you got contractors are like, you're still you're 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 a contract for the U.S. government, and yeah. you're in a in it's supposed to be a defensive posture unless it turns into an offensive battle, right? Yeah, out in the red zone or where. But you got you got um, a mercenary is basically a gun for hire. You yeah. know, he is um, an offensive. He's in an offensive posture, and uh, generally for other governments, it doesn't have to be for government other governments. But generally, he's working for the big money uh, in a very direct action or that type of offensive posture. You know, like going over to do something to someone for an undisclosed large amount of money. Yeah. Like the movies. Like the movies, bro. <laughs> Straight up, like the movies. Um, and so was doing was da- was dabbling in that because I, I had to make money. And then, um, uh, and then I, I just, but I was lost, bro. I mean, 
it sounds amazing, like a wild life. And it was, and I was doing cocaine and, and I was just blasting coke all the time. And, and then out, I out there in Colombia. Yeah. And then, and then how I, good was that cocaine out there? Man, it was it was pretty good, you know, but it wasn't crazy, you know. Numbing the teeth, the face, yeah, everything. yeah, like like Al like like um, Al Pacino and Scarface, man. <laughs> and and so I was doing crazy, crazy stuff there, and um, but but I was miserable, man. I was miserable because I was by myself. I was I was lone wolf out there, yeah, and just kind of and and I was paranoid. I had basically turned into McAfee. Like super paranoid, looking over my back all the time. Well, you're on the run. Not like, not like geeked out, but like, but like, just yeah. Like, you know, I'd, I'd go sober for a while and then just go back into like three or four day binger. Yeah, and then come out of it, you know, and then work and then come back and and um, and uh, yeah, man. Eventually, I decided I I gotta I gotta do something about this. And I just kept traveling around, you know. Then I went to Thailand, stayed in Thailand for a while, traded some Muay Thai and stuff, and. Uh, that that kept me a little more sober, you know. Yeah. Um, but then I knew, man, I was just I was just drowning out the the the, the sorrows of life. I was drowning out that that fear of, of always being watched and, and and the man coming after you. And I just knew, bro, they had it out for me this time. Yeah. And so you know, they say every outlaw comes home to see his mom, and he gets killed or he gets arrested, you know. And so I had to see my mom, man. I was getting homesick, so. After two years, I come back to Dallas, Texas, and I, I say, Mom, can we go get coffee? She said, oh, happy to see me. Yeah. And, and we go sit down at a coffee place, and we're drinking coffee. And it was it was, it was was really hard, man. It was super sad because, um, you know, I know a lot of people out there have said bye to their mom one last time and or their loved one. And I just said, Mom, I, I got to go for a long time. I don't know when I'm going to be back. Yeah, bro, and it almost brings tears now because it was hard. And so, I was leaving the country on a one-way ticket to Bali the next day. Yeah, I was out of there, brother. How are you traveling though? With uh, you know, a warrant for your arrest, right? No, uh, they 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 didn't put a warrant out for my. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, they they did, they did, but they weren't um, picking me up at the customs. Okay, and, and but here's what, here's what's crazy: in Medellin, Nicaragua, all these different customs. I'd go through. And they always flagged me. And yeah. I was so paranoid, man, because every time you go through customs, I'm like, I'm going to get picked up like John McAfee. That's how they picked him up. Yeah. And I know I'm next. So every single time I go through customs, I'm worried. And they they would always, like, pull me to the side, this gringo dude, and pull me to the side and take my bag and bring it in the back for a long time. And then I would sit in this room, and I'd be like, oh, keep it cool, man, keep it cool. And, and, then, they, <laughs> and then they'd bring back my bag and say, here you go, Mr. Watson. You know, yeah. like... And, and just super nice, chill. And I was like, that ain't right. That ain't right. Like, what? Like why they take my bag every single time and don't say nothing to me, come back and say, okay, my, Mr. Watson, like, see yeah. you. Have a great flight. And a couple of times I had some shenanigans in that bag. I had, like, pills and stuff. Yeah. And they were like, oh, what are these? And I'd say, like, prescription pills. And they, they obviously weren't. And they were like, okay. You know, and it was, like, too, too cool with me, too cool. And so um, later on, man... After I got arrested, man, they they said they had been photographing my bag, every single customs. They photographed all my stuff, tracking me all the time, but never, uh, but never, never taking you in. Never not not taking you. me in until they waited until I got all the way back. They they allowed me to travel, which is weird. Uh. And then when I finally came back to the states, oh man, I'm with my mom drinking coffee. Tell her bye one last time. I'm going to Bali, and. All of a sudden, I get this peace over me, this warm sensation. I'm like, wow. I'm like, what did I take? What kind of pills did I take? Xanax or something? And I knew I didn't take none. I was like, what? What's going on? And I said, Mom, somebody must be praying for me. And and she's like, Well, you know, I've been praying for you. And, and we start walking back to my car, to her car, and this SUV just pulls up, squ you know, squeezes the brakes, and this guy jumps out with a pistol in my face, and it's all plain clothes. FBI bearded out, long hair, and the Dallas SWAT team is cordoned off the whole area, bro. And so I'm like, oh my god, bro. So they 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 booked me right there, man. Wow. They're like get on the ground, you know. Like and I, I, just, I spread out. I'm like, oh, in front of moms and everything. Huh? In front of my mom, and, and I pushed Damn. her aside, man. Yeah. And so basically, I, um, you know, uh, 
that was it for me. And I, I was happy about it, though, bro. Like, I, I wasn't happy, but I was, like, relieved. Like, finally, man, like, I can, I can kind of rest. It may be in a jail cell, but at least I can, like, rest. Yeah, it was over with. It was being over. On, being on the, you know, paranoid, being looking over your shoulder, you know, in your head, you know, you're on the run, even though they're letting you kind of, like, you know. Yeah, there's no finality to your life. There's no ending to it. Yeah, but, you know, the yeah, 100%. And I felt like that so many times once I finally got apprehended and it's like, all right, it's over with, and you just get a, a sense of peace, calmness. All right, now we're going to cross this other bridge, but until then I'm going to rest up and... You know, yeah. you know, now we're going to do this right here. Um, and so they were charging you for. So they sent me straight to FMC, the Fort Worth Federal. And, yeah. and it's I guess it's all offenders. And it's a medical facility of medical, you know, uh, inmates like the Tiger King was there and stuff. And, <laughs> that yeah. dude's a trip, What's man. crazy is when I was on the run, I was always watching him on Netflix. Yeah. And now he's in the pod next to me. Oh, man. It was crazy, bro. Crazy life. And, and so. The Tiger King, bro. Yeah. So, so my lawyer said they, they charged me with like, uh, I got charged with eight felonies. Yeah. Uh, money, money wire fraud, uh, conspiracy, uh, crypto touting, you know, uh, money laundering and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, what the hell is all this stuff? I didn't really understand it at first, you know, until the lawyer starts explaining it. You start to learn like what everything is. And you're like, oh yeah, I guess I did what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what they call that? You yeah. know? <laughs> okay. So that's what I was doing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of what it was. It was like a, like, like, cause when you're doing that stuff, you don't really know, you don't really know the, the terminology for it, you know? You're like, oh shit, that shit was really illegal, huh? <laughs> oh, so that's illegal, huh? <laughs> you yeah. Know? My lawyer's like, yeah, Jimmy. Um, and to be fair, you know, the, there wasn't any, there wasn't any rules on, on crypto at the time. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, it's kind of like a gray area, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I've had people say, man, you stole millions of dollars from old women, you know, stuff. And I'm like, bro, unless your grandma had the IQ of Elon Musk back in 2017, trading altcoins in her, in her basement with five computer screens, like a nerd. Yeah. Bro, shut up, man. You know, yeah. I wasn't doing that, bro. Like, you know, I guess so. But Ain't no old grannies throwing down on crypto in 2017 when Bitcoin's at 400 bucks. You know what I mean? You had to be highly sophisticated. It was very hard to understand stuff. Yeah, for sure, um, for sure. But I ain't making excuses either, you know? No, 100%, yeah. And so McAfee ended, ends up, what, hanging himself? Yeah, so 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 I win my little, my little, they want to transfer me. The DOJ wants to transfer me to upstate New York. Yeah. And so I, I win that little case. The Texas judge is like, nah, we don't do this to our veterans. This is south of Mason Dixie. He goes, so put this boy on house arrest. Five. Yeah. So I had to sign a $5 million promissory bomb and then go on house arrest, pre trial confinement. Yeah. And so they strap R2D2 around my ankle. Okay. And, yeah. and I'm on super restricted. <laughs> I'm on some kind of like level level 10 restriction at my house, man. I can't do anything, bro. Because they, they, they mad, they're mad at me and they're mad they lost the. the Sending me upstate New York. And so um, I'm on house arrest for like a year and a half, uh, waiting for John McAfee to, to, to come back from Spain to okay. get extradited back to the U.S. Yeah. And me and him are going to stay in trial together. And he is found dead in his prison cell the very same day he loses his extradition and he has to be shipped to America. So... I mean, let me ask you this, man. Yeah, because you were in prison. I mean, you you did hard time. Like, all, like, like I don't know this, stuff. Uh, but um, do you think? Do you think, from all your experience, that a guy will kill himself if if he finds out he's getting transferred out of a out of a really shitty place? He's yeah. been in a really shitty place. He's deteriorating, and he finds out that he's going to be transferred. Is that not good news? That's that's great news, and I wanna I wanna and I wanna expand on it one minute. Let me let me pee real quick, bro. Yeah. So McAfee is he's getting extradited. Yeah. From a shitty ass prison in yeah. what, Spain or something like that. In you said Spain. It was in, bad, dude. In Spain, and um, all of a sudden he is found dead in his cell, supposedly by hanging himself, but with a rope. With a rope. With a rope that came from where? 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the, the conspiracy theory behind it is, did he really hang himself or was he offed? In was, there, right? Was he offed? Yeah. Was he offed in there by the police? Did he have a celly? I mean, did he have a celly? I don't know that, but but also, or did he pay off these these authorities and like he did it, it, a very very similar thing in, in in Belize that he actually was in prison, he faked a heart attack, uh, and then he was transferred out and, and did some weird stuff, and I mean McAfee was slick Rick. Yeah. He was always way ahead. Yeah. And the only person that I know of that seen the autopsy was Janice. And Janice is like this. That's her that's her man, you know. Yeah, 100%. So you you so what you're saying is potentially he could still be alive. I, that, that, there's three options. Okay. I you know, I I'm more along the lines that is he's he's dead. Okay. But like that somebody offed him. I look, I know I wanted to ask you that question, but from from my from me knowing John? Yeah. I know that there's no way he killed himself. Yeah. He even had whacked on his arm. He said, if I if I die, I didn't do it. Yeah. If I die, I didn't do it. So the question again is, would somebody in a situation like that do that to themselves? If they found out, if you found out you were getting transferred from really bad prison. Yes, sir. That day. Yes. It, you gonna hang yourself an hour later after hearing that news? No, I mean, no. I mean, I mean, is it plausible he's somebody getting, would do could do that? I mean, I, I, anything's possible. And but the time he's getting extradited back to the states, correct? He's gonna stand trial, but he but he's a fighter. But the he's trial a, is the trial a life sentence? It, it, for him, it is. Okay. For for being seventy five, he's yeah. seventy five years old, and he, he's probably gonna do. I mean, I, I think we were facing 12 to 15, they said. Yeah. And so the only one that saw the autopsy was, and so the U.S. didn't ask to see anything like that because there's no, certain. I assume, I assume the DOJ was thorough because they wanted John. In their investigation, making and, sure that he is dead. I'm sure that they, they somehow confirmed with the authorities that he death. was dead. Yeah. But you pay somebody enough money like John had, and I mean, they could, they could. They could probably swindle some stuff up and and shit. Said this. You know this. Oh yeah, I set this shit up, dog. Bro, how you know all that? Uh, trial and error, baby. Uh, YouTube, man. Yeah. Uh, hustle definition right there. Oh yeah, hundred percent, brother. Well, I used to have. That's my. Uh, I used to have a engineer or producer, whatever you want to call. It, that would sit there and switch the camera and do all this stuff. But you know, I started doing it like this. And so I'm back to the basics. Yeah, I used to have great. a I used to have a lot of guys in here, bro. You come in here and there'd be a lot of guys, but a lot of the guys would be just hanging out, you know. So now I'm just trying to make it a more of an intimate, yeah, intimate uh, thing, opposed to having a bunch of gangsters up in this bitch, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. That uh, all have titles as security. Y'all would have had me so paranoid, bro. When I walked up in here, I thought it was like a mob hit, dude. I was like, oh man, dude, I got trick coming here. I'm going to get whacked. Well, a lot of times it's like that, bro. But you got to keep in mind, though, that we uh, we we do interviews with the street. A lot of, a lot of times, it, I mean, some of the times the dudes that I'm interviewing are strapped up. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just, like, I had a couple of dudes that'd be like, hey, you know I'm strapped up right here, right? Oh, and, man, dude, what? Yeah. And yes. I, in my head, in my head, I'm just like, you dumb motherfucker, you see all these fools right here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, like, but I always tell them, I said, hey, bro, that shit ain't going to change the interview. Yeah, you know, and yeah, they gonna right. change it. But so doing the street, the street interviews, we got to stay in between the lines. You know what I mean? And so one side, you got the streets watching and listening, and the other side, you have all the agencies watching. You know what I mean? So I don't want, I don't want my guys or the guys that I have on the platform getting in trouble with FBI. I don't, and I don't want them getting in trouble with the streets because they got to walk outside. I got to walk outside. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? And it's, it's real heavy like that out here in the city of Los Angeles. You know, you gotta be just, you just gotta be careful. So I always tell the guys when you share your stories, you know what I mean? Make sure you've done the time, you've done the crime. It's already, you know, you can share that story. Don't don't share a story about something you done. You know, with this statute of limitations, but not for murder, right? Um, but you just gotta I always I don't ever want anybody getting arrested uh doing Hoodstock's podcast. So share your story, but share it with caution, you know, because we don't wanna piss nobody off. You don't ever badmouth the cops on here. I don't play that shit. I yeah, never have. Even when I was on the streets 
running around. It's a game, bro. You know what I mean? It's a game we playing. You know, they got one thing to do is to uh, arrest the criminals, and the criminals have one thing to do is to commit the crimes and try to get away from it. I mean, it's a game, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, whatever. But um, it's it's uh, it, when I started this podcast, it was most definitely treading on uh, treading on uncharted waters. You know, um, because I have nothing but uh, solid people. I don't have no snitches. I don't have uh, in regards to the streets. You know what I mean? I don't. You know, you gotta. You know, you gotta still be. Yeah, you got. You, it's a fine line. You, oh, you gotta, it's a you, super fine line, bro. You gotta play here. Almost Risky, like politics, bro. man. Risky. Oh, 100 percent. It's politics on both sides, bro. I gotta respect both sides, and I'm. Yeah. Doing, I, I keep on saying both sides because you have the agencies. You know, then you have the streets. You know, and. When you do what I do right here, and if you're being reckless, what, you can get it from both sides, or you can get it from one or the other. Have you other. seen that? Huh? Have you seen that? In the sense of me podcasting? Oh no, I'm, yeah, I ain't uh, gonna ask you that, but but no, I haven't life. seen that. But in the sense of just life, yeah, fuck yeah, bro. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it comes with the territory, you know. Yeah, it comes with the territory, and this has been uh, this has been a risky ass podcast in regards to, you know stories that I've had, you know, I don't know, bro. It's just been, uh, you know, but I mean, some of the, some of the most, you know, like you've been around them, brother, you know, millionaires, billionaires, successful people in the world, you know, you know, scare man ain't gonna make no money. I mean, like they're the most risk takers in the world, right? Yeah. You're yeah. one of the biggest risk takers in the world. I mean, the life that you lived and what yeah, you've been I do doing. A lot of talk, a lot of big risk, man. A lot of big risk. You Do know? you still take risk? No, no. I mean, I mean, I mean. There's. I think there's risk in coming on podcast. Like this is a risk coming here a little yeah. bit, like yeah. low level I, risk. I, I think there's risk coming on anything because because there's a lot of haters out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that will want to see my demise, man. Hundred percent, mine too. A but lot on just of different levels, right? Yeah, different. But yours levels. maybe uh, on levels of within the agencies, maybe. You think so? Um, I think they got. I think they got tired of, of my situation. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they stand, but, but the fact that my case was dismissed and and I admitted to doing wrong, and uh, I don't. I don't ever deny. I don't ever try to like skip around and say I didn't do anything wrong, you know. Uh, but but it's still a scary situation, you know. Um, but I had to pay tons of fines. You know. Are you still paranoid? Any paranoia in your life now? Yeah. It's always. Yeah, man. I mean, look, man. Um, Jesus is straight up blasting me in, on house arrest um, about the same time John McAfee died. Okay. And um, I literally met met God. Like, I know I know that sounds crazy, but but I, I um, was able to go to this Operation Restore Warrior. These two guys prayed for me. And these two guys literally revealed to me part of my past that not even the FBI knew because they know everything. Yeah. Not a psychic could know. A psychic knows your birthday, maybe your last four years social. These two guys revealed an entire part of my past that was extremely dark. And they even told me about a path that I used to walk down behind this house. I heard you tell that story. At McAfee's. Yeah. And so how do these guys know this? Bro, Bro, what I what I experienced, man, was so supernatural, uh, and I asked this dude Daniel, who was staring at me, staring at me right in my face, and he told me straight up uh, about a path that I used to walk down by myself, and I when I was walking down this path, I used to cry out to God. In fact, I used to say Jesus, and uh, and he told me about this very specific moment in my life that in this path. Not other people knew about either. It was it was hidden by these cat cattails uh, in, near the sound in Ocracoke. And man, when he told me that, bro, because you have, you know what I'm saying. When you there's a time in your life where you're all alone, and you cry out deep, deep those deep groans, and you feel lost in this world. And that's where I was at that time. And when this dude told me that exact moment, staring directly at me, bro, I just I just it broke me in half. I fell back, dude. I had this ankle brace on. I'm, I'm, I'm facing 15 years in prison, and going for sure. And, and I fell back in my seat, and I just bawled and bawled like a baby for the first time in my life. Just, just, just 
snot coming out. I looked terrible, man. Yeah. And and I said, I, I, all I could get out was how. Like, how do you know this about me? How do you know this about me? Yeah. Because it was it was terrifying. You talk about scary. I, I was listening to an interview and you kept on yelling at the dude. Tell me more. I Tell kept, me more. Yeah, because they started. This guy started. Because <laughs> I because I skipped over part of you know how you skip over trauma. Yeah. You skip over bad parts of your life. And I and they told me to tell me tell tell me their my story, and I skipped over that traumatic that that time that dark time with John McAfee and stuff, and they were like you skipped over part of your story, and I said and I looked at him I said no I didn't like let's move on continue, and he goes no, he goes you skipped over part of your story, and I said I told you I didn't bro, and he goes, uh he goes and he looked at me he goes was that at the the love shack, the love boat, the love house. And I in in the Love Shack is the nickname that I had given this big McAfee's house in this dark time of life. Yeah. And I and I I went like this. I just like if I told you something about your past right now that nobody else knew, you'd want you'd want to kill me, man. Freak or you you'd be like like freak me the fuck yo, out, yo, bro. Like what's up, man? Like, How do you know this shit? Yeah, I got, and I got aggressive. They said they got scared because I said, man, I'm, I'm a fragile dude, and fragile dudes don't have nothing to lose, man. Yeah. Like, I ain't got nothing going for me, bro. Like I'm, I'm thinking about offing myself, man. If I, if I had a gun, and and so I, I stand up. I said, I'm out of here. I don't know what kind of game you're playing here, bro. But I ain't down with this. I thought maybe like cameras or the feds or something. Yeah. And he goes, No, no, sit down, Jimmy. This is what we do here. We ask Jesus to come in and and tell us. He he does the heavy lifting. We don't do much. We just get these downloads. And 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 Dan, this guy, Daniel, start starts to walk me through this period of my life. He says, There's a screen door. And you walk into this house, and there's a jacuzzi to the right. Yeah. And I said, so what? I said, okay, that's that's accurate, but it's not good enough for me. He said, okay. You walk in the in the first floor, and there's an armory with a hidden door with guns in it. And I said, and? Like, so? And he's like, and there's an elevator with a hidden cherry door. There's an elevator in this house, man, in this three-story house, shaped like a ship in Okra Coke. This massive house. You know, these billionaires have a lot of money. And I said, so what? He, I said, and tell me more. Then tell me more. And I'm like, I'm like standing up in their face, like, tell me more then, bro. And I'm like antagonizing him, angry. I'm like, tell me more. Almost like like slapping him. Almost. And he's like, okay, you walk up the stairs and there's all these rooms. In each one of these rooms, there's a grid coordinates above it. And I corrected him. I said, no, Latin long, which is the same thing. Yeah. He said, numbers. And I said, okay. I said, tell me more. He said, they have names, Tahiti, Thailand this country, this country. And I'm like, and I'm like, hey man, I'm like, tell me more than bro. If you know so much, I'm not telling you, I'm not going to tell you shit, bro. And he's like, he's like, okay. And he says, you go up another flight and there's an office there. There's a big room. He said, and there's a, and he kind of goes like this kind of fishing for, it. he goes, and there's um, uh, a big ship steering wheel up there. And bro, I started breaking down. I started shaking. Like I said, I said, all right, bro. I said, then, Tell me more. I, I want to know everything. He said, okay. He said, there's uh, ships, boats that come up to the house in this canal. And, and that come right up to the house. Boats. Yeah. Ships. For, freaking so accurate. He said, and it's overlooking a sound. And we called it a sound. I mean, it's just, like so accurate. And, and I said, and I got so mad. And I started shaking, bro. And I said, I said, man. I, and I said, one last time. I said, I said, freaking tell me more, bro. I said, tell me more if you know so much. <laughs> and he says, he goes, all right. He said, there's a path. <laughs> there's a path beyond the house. Yeah. I still can shake it up real bad over this, bro, because he said there was a, there was a path behind the house hidden that you used to walk down. And pro. When he said that, man, I'm sorry, bro. No, you good, bro. bro. I'm sorry, man. Uh, when he when he, when 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 he said that, when he said that, I fell in the back of my seat like this. When, when he, sorry, man. No, you good, bro. When when I when he said that, I fell in the back of my seat and uh, and just cried, man, for the first time in in years, man. Just cried it out, bro. Just cried, and because it, what he was showing me, man, was that that God is with you. In your most darkest, loneliest, porn addicted, crack it, meth head out, addicted, debauchery, 
everything, as long as you cry out to God, to Jesus particularly, it He's He's there with you, walking, walking, walking with you when you cry out, because because Jesus came to save the lost, not the, not the person that's that's okay. <sighs> Excuse me. Not the person that's okay. Yeah. And it made me realize, man, this this kind of love, man, I ain't never seen in my life. I never felt that kind of love. And all I know is pain and misery, suffering, war, death, persecution, prosecution, court after court after court. And all that's all I know is pain in my life. And here, and here this guy says, I seen you walking down a path by yourself, Jimmy. Yeah. Five. Five years ago, Ben, homie, five years ago. Yeah. I mean, this was five years ago or four years ago. And, bro, when he said that, man, I later asked Daniel, I said, I said, Daniel, man, I said, how, how, what was going through your head when, you, when, when that happened? And he said, man, I don't know, bro, but he goes, all I know is Jesus told me to keep answering you until you believed. And so he just kept answering me until I believed. And when he said that, man, I fell back in my seat. And it was game over for Jimmy, man. Because I didn't care if I went to prison at that point. I didn't care about nothing else in my life. It was a perspective change. So I don't know if Jesus literally touched me. I I, I didn't see him. But that interaction yeah. changed my life forever. I stood up. And I always say it was like I was carrying around two big sea bags my whole life with bricks in them of all this pain, and it was like I dropped them off. And I stood up like a new man, bro. And I walked out of there, and one of the guys said, hey, man, by the way, uh, Jesus is telling you checkmate. I said, what the heck does checkmate mean? He said, it means you, your case is going to get dismissed. You know, like a big chessboard. Yes, piece, sir. Piece of moving. And I said, well, they, these guys don't know my case. They don't know what happened because I'm going, you know, not really much of a chance for me. And so I go home, and my lawyer calls me. And I go back on house arrest. My lawyer calls me and says, checkmate. He calls me and says, the first thing he says is, he says, Jimmy. He said, checkmate, man. I said, I said, what, I said, what the hell did you just say? He said, I said, did you say checkmate? And he goes, yeah. And I said, what does that mean? He said, it means your case is getting dismissed. He says, who cares what it means? It means your case is getting dismissed, Jimmy. He goes, I've never seen that. He goes, uh, say a prayer for me, brother. And you know, I had to pay a lot of fines. Yeah. You know, civil civil fines and all this stuff. But my but and it wasn't like they walked up and cut the ankle bracelet off. There was a process to go through. But pretty soon I was I was a free man. <sighs> free man. And uh and uh, my life radically changed, man. Things things became. It's there's been difficult times since that two years ago, but my life has been changed, man. It's the realest thing that ever happened to me. Like turned upside down type of change. Yeah, it turned upside down. Yeah, like night and day. Like an eagle flying above the Grand Canyon. I always say, man, high as high, high as you can get. Yeah. On life, you know, good thing, good things happening. Life changed around. You and know, it's because you accepted Jesus in your life. Yeah. And, and well, Jesus came and. I, people, Obviously, like the, the, the story is so. Me and my me and my wife were just watching this. You shared the story last night in our bedroom, and she she looked up because she was doing something on her phone. And when she started hearing you share this part of your story on another podcast, she, you know, got her right locked in now. She's off her phone, and uh, she looked at me. and She was like, "Wow!" And I said, and I told her, I said, I said, I wonder if God is sending a Jimmy my way, you know, to share his story and um, for me to, because I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm missing, I have holes in my life, you know, and I've always been connected to God, but I just, I always backslide into like, yeah. you know, just dumb shit, bro. You know, not, yeah. not, not horribly backslide that I end up back in prison. No, you I, know know. I mean, I know. but just back to like touching on old ways and stuff, man. And I just, you know, and I want to, you know, I, I want change, bro. You know what I mean? So, but I, I told my wife, I said, Man, I wonder if God's sending Jimmy my way, you know what I mean? To, yeah. You know? Yeah, I believe he has, brother. I believe um, 
one thing that you know there's a lot there's a lot to this story right there's yes, a lot sir. to unpack yeah but one thing that uh i know for a fact like i don't hear from god all the time but i heard this i heard god say to me at this place where these two guys pray for me right after that yeah he says you're going to be a lighthouse to my people and a lighthouse guides the lost ships back in bro yeah and and the whole reason is 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 not because of the, the lighthouse, but the main character of my story is is Jesus. Who 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 the fuck cares about the seals? The seals never did me no no good. Uh, who cares about the Marines and, and Blackwater? I mean, I, I don't love the Marines and all this stuff, but I I ain't seen nothing but pain in about everything I ever did in my life. And so the main character in this whole story is a man named. Jesus, Yeshua, that that guy that died on that cross for us. Yeah. This ain't about religion. It's about a real no joke relationship and the only one who can feel those terrible dark places and holes in our life. And I have I have temptations come across me. Yeah. I have dark periods of my life still. I still have you know PTSD from 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 being chased and prosecuted. You know you know you know paranoid and stuff. But every single time, man, I, I I stop and I pray to God, man. Your listeners hear this right now, and this is for anybody, man. Uh, there's there's if y'all want to stop all the racing voices in your head, if you want to stop the craziness in your life, and and the all you don't know if it's your voice, you don't know if it's the enemy, the anxiousness, the depression. All you got to do is stop right now and say. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every voice except for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then just wait. And you may have them crazy thoughts. You may say, man, this dude is nuts. This guy that just came on this this podcast is, is crazy, right? Yeah. But but you can't deny my story. You can't. And if you still hear those racing thoughts, just say it again. But make sure you invoke the only name that can cancel out every voice, can cancel out every problem in your life. The only one that can bring peace in your life is Jesus. The only one that can validate us, man. I'm going to start practicing that. Yeah. 100%, brother. This has been amazing, Mr. Jimmy Watson. This has been absolutely an honor, brother, to sit with you for these couple hours, man. Thank you so much for making the time. I never thought that a man of your caliber, your stature, um, uh, would be you know, come on, come on down to little old hoodstocks, man. And I just want to let you know that you are. Once this gets dropped, man, you are going to impact this community right here, this inner city. They need to hear wow. this story, man. They need to. Um, how can we support you, brother? Man, you can support me by coming on over and just, just, just follow my channel uh, at Mighty Warrior um, Twenty Four uh, on Instagram. You know, and the reason why it's called Mighty Warrior is because I'm calling everybody out there a mighty warrior, but it's up to you to just start believing it from this day forward. No matter where you are, you're a mighty warrior for God, and he's got a mighty purpose for you. And all you got to do is crack your heart open just this much, as, as hard as that is sometimes for us men, is crack your heart open this much and just believe because what happened to me, brother, you know, people can trash my story. People can try to find flaws in my story, character, flaw, you know, all the stuff that people do on social media. Do that, yeah. it, it's okay. It's okay. As long as you, you know, in your heart, what I said about my crazy experience with Jesus is real. I haven't had many people say, Oh, that's bullshit. Like give people, when, when it's real, people are like, okay, well, what else is it? Why would there, there's better ways to make money. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's easier ways to make money, bro. Yeah, you can be selling fake Gucci bags or something, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Brother, this has been absolutely amazing, man. I you know, I, I know the Goonies, the community right here is going to support you. Um, and anytime you're in the city, man, you know what I mean? Just, you know, you ever need to tap in with myself, whatever, anything, anytime, brother, we got you, bro. Thank, Thank you, you so bro. much. Y'all come join my tribe, man. Come yeah. over to Instagram, see my tribe. I got a big tribe. I got an awesome group of men. 
Yeah, yeah, and I will be, and I'll be clipping this up, and you, I'll be tagging Thank you, you and, bro. Bro, yeah. you, you're gonna see how I how I do it, bro. I can't I, wait, I, man. I flood, I flood it with clips, bro, where people are gonna just bam, it will multiply a hundred percent. You know, right, dude, right. Damn, I appreciate you, bro. Jimmy, thank you so much. Everybody, get up for Jimmy Watson, baby. We're out of here. All right. Jeez. All right. All right, everybody. Hood Stocks is sponsored by Kush Stock. All right, October twenty six. Hey, man, the best marijuana festival you will ever go to. Kush Stock. October 26th at Adelanto Stadium. Tap in. You best believe we will be there. Breaking news. The Fed has just lowered rates. If you own a home, now is the time to revisit the financing. And if you want to buy, revisit the approval process. Many of our listeners mistakenly believe the only way to buy a home is to have perfect credit, a large down payment, and then proceed to get into a bidding war on your favorite home. This isn't the case right here. Uh Uh-uh. The team at Prime Equity Mortgage has access to off-market inventory and access to 50-plus banks plus their own bank. Jesus. They have helped thousands of people in our community get their home and even help investors find ugly homes to flip. This is how home flippers buy their homes, all right? Call my dog, Andrew, man, uh, and see what he can do for you and your family, all right? His phone number is 626-825-6565. Looking for some good quality cannabis. I mean, killer quality cannabis. Hip the folks at Killer Kush. They specialize in bringing the best available uh, quality available from OG to exotic. They got it all. Baby, hit them up on IG at Killer Kush underscore underscore 14. 20 to find a location. All right, looking for the best criminal defense attorneys in, in the city of Los Angeles. Look no further. Uh uh-uh. uh. Derek Sherrod is our guy. He could be your guy as well. Sometimes you got to cross that bridge. Sometimes you had a wild weekend. Sometimes you've been incriminated on something you just didn't do, man. And you got to have the best on the team, man. That's Doug Sherrod. And you can reach our criminal defense attorney, Doug Sherrod, at kingkonglawyer.com. Kingkonglawyer.com. Orange County, stand up. Go to Phenom is a lifestyle brand that's dedicated to supporting and inspiring individuals who are determined to achieve their dreams. We believe that no matter where you come from and what you've been through with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. Visit gutterphenom.com, gutterphenom.com, and uh, yeah, they're going to take care of you real nice. What the hell happened right here? Oh, yeah, use exclusive code, hoodstocks20, get 20% off. Hey, uh, today's episode is brought to you by Street Polish, the brand that's taking streetwear to the next level. The mixed raw street vibes with a clean, fresh look. So whether you're grinding or hanging out, Street Polish has you looking sharp. Check out their new gear and be a part of the crew where style really matters. Big shout out to Street Polish for sponsoring this episode. And you can find them at streetpolishedbrand.store or on Instagram at street underscore polished. All right, peep game. If you have an annuity or structured settlement, hit up your girl, Veronica, with Catalina Structure Funding. She can get you your money when you need it most. Catalina Structure Funding is attorney-owned and operated, so hit up your girl at 818-319-1581. A, we're also sponsored by uh, Graphic Joe. Graphic Joe does all our stickers, man. And so if you'd like to, you know what I mean? You need some stickers. We got you. You know what I mean? We're going to give you our plug, a hookup. All that good shit. Uh, matter of fact, just go to Instagram, graphic at graphic Joe underscore, DM him. Tell him Hoodstock sent you, and he's going to take good care of you. And uh, we will be, uh, yeah, let's get back.